awesome and mighty God, a loving God, a caring God. He's God all by himself. Worthy of praise, worthy of glory. You know, as believers, the least we can do is offer God praise and worship and thanksgiving. If you really want to get loose, don't care what you're bound with, you continue to praise the God who made the heaven and earth. Ain't nothing too hard for him. You might look at a thing hard, but it ain't too hard for our God. Just keep giving the glory. Be free in him. Whom the Son has set free, he's made free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise his name forevermore. Thank God for his presence. Thank him for his word. Thank him for the blood. Hallelujah. We're going to give God thanks for all the mothers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. greet you in the name of Jesus. We pray that you come with your heart open. Amen. We welcome you to Greater New Zion Missionary Baptist Church where the word of God is preeminent and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our pastor, Pastor Anna. Is anybody expecting God to do something in their life? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Repeat these words out to me. Make a joyful noise Unto the, Unto the Lord, all ye land, all ye land. Serve, the Lord with gladness. serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his with singing. Know ye that the Lord, that the Lord. He, is God. he is God, and he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates, his gates. with thanksgiving. And to his court, court. with praises. praises. Be thankful unto him. him. And bless his name. name. For the Lord is good. good. His mercy is everlasting. everlasting. And his truth enduring all generations. generations. Amen, Amen, amen. amen. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank God for mothers. If it had not been for mothers, we wouldn't be here. If you would, turn, turn to women to Psalm 34. And we're going to read verse 8 together. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fears him and delivered them all. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man that trusts in him. Amen. Good morning. And once again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we come this morning to your throne of grace, Father God, thanking you and praising you and lifting you up. Thanking you, Father God, for another chance at life. Thanking you for another chance, Father God, to praise your holy name. Father God, we just come magnifying you this morning, Father God, because there's no one like you and there's no one that can compare to you. Father God, we come lifting up this servant to you this morning, Father God, that you would just have your way, Father God. We pray, Lord, right now that your people will have ears to hear and hearts to receive and that we will make application to our lives. Father God, we pray for this day that's set aside for our mothers, Father God, and we ask you to bless each mother in this household. 
We pray, Father God, that today will be a blessed day for them, Father God, and that they will share it with family in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the ones who are on their way, Father God. We just ask you to protect them, Father God, keep them from all hurt, harm, or danger. Father God, we thank you for being the great God that you are, being God that's more than enough. Father God, we thank you for Pastor this morning, Father God, who's going to break bread this morning, Father God. And we just ask, Father God, that you would just keep him as a, 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 a pen, Father God, ready to write whatever it is that you would have him to say. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray for Psalms 2, Father God, as we render praise unto you, Father God, anoint each voice, Father God, that we may render praise unto you, Father God, that you will be glorified and the body be edified. Father God, we thank you for today, Father God. We thank you for watching over us last night, Father God, and, and waking us up this morning, Father God, because it was your finger of love and not the alarm clock. Father God, we just bless you today, Father God, this special day for mothers, Lord. We just thank you for every mother that's in here, Father God. And, Lord, we know, Lord, that the mother's love is special, Father God. So we just give you praise and thanks today, Father God. And, Lord, I ask you, there's anyone that walking here this morning, Father God, with their head down, struggling with anything, Father God, we ask you to deliver them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift their heads up, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we pray for Minister English, Lord, as he leaves to go share the word, Father God. We just pray that the people have our ears to hear and a heart to receive. Father God, we will forever forever lift you up, Father God, and praise your holy name, because you're worthy of all the praise. In the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, above all principalities and power. The demons tremble at that name. Hallelujah. Glory. There is no power that can resist his authority. He's been exalted above all principality. None of the name on earth whereby men can be saved. No, no, no. Whoever calls on him will live forever. In the name of Jesus, I have the victory. At the name of Jesus, demons must flee. Who can stand before me when I call his name? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hey, hey. When I call out, Say, oh, 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 I think I'll say that again. There is no power that can resist his authority. He's been exalted above all principality. There's no other name on earth where I'm in. Can be saved, no, no, no. Whoever calls on him will live forever. See, in the name of Jesus, I have the victory. At the name of Jesus, demons must flee. Who can stand before me when I call his name? Jesus, 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 hey, hey. When I call out, 
say, oh, 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 oh. Now I've been bought at such a great price. I've been called out to be a witness for Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All on this about to fear hell, nothing can stop me. I have his mighty hammer, so nothing can defeat me. No, no, no. In the name of Jesus, I have the victory. At the name of Jesus, demons must flee. Who can stand before me when I call his name? Jesus, 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 hey, hey. When I call out, say, oh, 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 oh. <coughs> If you're sick in your body, there is salvation, deliverance. If you're sick in your body, there is salvation, deliverance. His name, you need, you need, you need to call out. When I call out, say, oh, oh, oh. If you're sick in your body, there is salvation, deliverance. If you're sick in your body, there is salvation, deliverance. When I call out, say, oh, 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 His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Call him, call him. Let's call him, call him. Call him, call him. Call him, call him. Heal him. Deliver us. Salvation, victory, Jesus, 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 is the name. You need, you need, you need to call out. When I call out, say, oh, 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 oh. Just praise the Lord right now. Could have been dead, but we're still here. But I'm still here 
y'all can relate to this. Lied on, many times I've been lied on, but I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Burdens, I had to bear so many burdens, but I'm still Dark days, I had my share of dark days, but I'm still here. Yes, I am. Disappointments, I had so many disappointments, but I'm still here. Yes, it did. Kept me, Kept me right here. Made it through. Let me tell you what it was. It's by the grace of God that I'm still here today. He was always there, no matter what came my way. A very present help in my time of need. Standing right there just to see about me. Oh, I made it, made it through. Yes, I did, y'all. And I'm so glad about it. Lift your hands if you're glad you made it. I made it, made it through. And you ought to say this. Listen to me. I made it. Yes, I made it. God kept me here. Come on, y'all. I made it. Yes, I made it. God kept me here. And I'm so glad, y'all. Yes, I made it. Yes, I made it. God kept me here. One more time, y'all. Yes, I made it. Yes, I did, y'all. God kept me here through it all, through it all. I made it through another day's journey. God kept me
Cause you care. I'm 
say this, I don't care how man and how much manpower we have, I don't think that it's in us to really understand the things that women as mothers go through. Uh, only God knows. And, and at the same time, God has never spoken of any feminine, so he's not a mother for the motherless, but he's everything you need as a mother. He's there. Yeah, he's there. So so I, I just say uh, mothers this day, 
you know, set aside to honor you, and, and we certainly, I do honor you. I do honor you. Some, some have mothers that have already departed and made transition, but don't let that depress you. Thank God for the time that you did have, you know, so it, this ain't the end of it. So be grateful today. And uh, to the mothers, if I could sing you a song this morning, I sure enough would do it. I ain't, I ain't lying because the choir already got me fired up. Boy, I tell you, I was singing that song today. So that's the only reason why I'm not going to sing it to you because I don't know it. But, uh, but happy Mother's Day. Yeah, if I was going to sing one, I'd probably just do one like the, you know, like the birthday thing. Like, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. You know, something like that. But you, you don't really want that. What you want is some money. You'll smell the roses, but after a while, the roses are going to roll away. So, so I'm just like everybody else. I don't have nothing to put in your hand. I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for all the ministers. And um, amen. Thank God for all the brothers. And uh, Minister Evans is going to be leaving again this morning. He's, he's going to. He's going to be going out again, uh, preaching this morning over in, in Houghton, I believe. So he's always in flight. So, so thank God for him. And so if he leave in the middle of the message, it's not, he's not walking out on the word. He's just got to be at there, there a certain time. Okay. Well, if you just lift up your Bibles, we're going to get into the word. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah. M is for O is for. T is for, H is for, what's the next letter? E, that's right, E is for, <laughs> and the R is for, whatever you want to make it. <laughs> but anyway, man, I tell you, I really thank God uh, for mothers. And I know in the 21st century, it's a little more of a challenge. You know, uh, being a mother, especially you got teenagers growing up in your home and everything. And then you got those, you know, um, what we call millennial that, they have children, and you know you you still a parent to them. It, it, it's a challenge, but you know what? Uh, God has never allowed you to go through anything that He didn't bring you out of. Amen. And He always, where there's a God, where there is God, there's a way. Amen. So everything gonna be all right. Okay, let's mean it with me saying, "This is my Bible. It's the book of my life. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do today." I will be taught the indestructible, incorruptible, life-giving, life-changing, mountain-moving, devil-chasing word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My eyes are open. My ears are open. My heart is open to receive the precious seed of the word. I will never be the same. Never, never, never in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, th this morning we're going to wrap up our, our teaching on the judgment of the Jewish nation, which is actually putting emphasis on the tribulation period. And so um, I, I just have a few things to share. I'll probably repeat some things that I've already said, but I, I really want us to understand God's, a part of God's plan of, for the future. You know, God is not finished with the nation of Israel. I think that uh, for, for the fa past few weeks, we made that real clear that God still has a plan for Israel um, to kind of put us all on the same page I'm going to really kind of show us a little bit like I did last time where the tribulation period starts and then where it ends and then back up to the middle, okay? Now, for a lot of people, it may sound like this is just strange doctrine because you may not have heard a whole lot about, you know, uh, dispensation of truths, uh, eschatology, but this is it's in our future, and you can see it. I, I, I brought some articles out last week that I read to you, and I mean, if... If you couldn't see that from last week, I tell you what, you got to be blind. I stopped right there. You just can't see. Okay. Now do this for me. Um, turn to Revelation chapter number 13. This is probably where we're going to start at. And so what I want to do, I just want to kind of just, you know, bring us up to this point so we'll understand that there's a period of time coming up on this earth like none other in the history of mankind. So if you just rest right there in Revelation chapter 13, I, I'll catch you up. Right now we live in what is called the church age. The church age is the dispensation that God is calling out from among all the nations, 
those people who will be received into the body of Christ by accepting the finished work of Jesus Christ. So we're we're living in that time that is called the times of the Gentiles in one sense because the Gentiles are still in rule, but at the same time it's the period that God is doing something special that Old Testament prophets didn't have a clue, and that is that He's bringing two opposing groups of people, Jew and Gentile, into one body called the church. And so, so when, when Christ went to the cross and was crucified, we know that in the 69 weeks of the prophecy that Daniel made, Daniel made a prophecy, uh, actually he gave a prophecy that was given to him as far as the time zone is concerned, and that is that God was going to deal with Israel another 70 weeks. Uh, 70 weeks uh, the, the word week in the Hebrew would be the word Shabuah. In the Greek, it would be the word Heptod. And actually, it relates to uh, a week being seven years. So when you talk about the seven weeks, you're talking about 490 years. I mean, God is real specific, and he's accurate with his calculation. And so for 490 years, God says he's going to deal with Israel as a nation. Uh, he chose them to be his chosen people, and the reason why he chose Israel because he wanted them to come to Avenue where the Messiah would come into the world and redeem all of humanity. Okay, So we know from Bible prophecy and what we've already studied that the 69 weeks of Daniel's prophecy has already been fulfilled. So if you want to uh, picture something in your mind, look at we are living right now between the 69th and the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. The 70th week is actually that final week to fulfill Daniel's prophecy, which is actually seven years. So that way we know without a doubt that the tribulation period will be seven years. Now one thing that gives me blessed assurance is to know that when the tribulation period starts, you, me, and those who are part of the body of Christ, we will be evacuated. And so once the church has been raptured, started on Pentecost, it will end, the church age will end at the rapture, once that happens, then God starts his clock back with one week remaining, which is the equivalent of seven years of tribulation that's coming up on this earth. And if you, if you halfway read your Bible, you ought to be able to see right now that we're living in a day and time when this could happen at any moment. Of course, now we don't know uh, when all this will happen. We don't know, first of all, the rapture got to take place. We don't know when the rapture will take place, but we know that it's imminent which means that it can take place at any moment. While we're standing this morning, you know, the rapture could happen, and we'll be out of here. And once the church gets out of here, once the church is out of here, and then the Antichrist, who is the false messiah, will come, and he will sign a, a seven-year peace treaty, seven-year peace treaty, and in the middle of that week, he's going to break that covenant, and all hell is going to break out on planet Earth. So, so let's look at it like this. It starts in Revelation chapter 6 with a white horse rider. He's the Antichrist. It ends in Revelation chapter 19 with a white horse rider. He's Jesus Christ. The reason why I'm not turning to the scripture because I repeated it, you know, pretty much every week. So, so you, you got that. So the tribulation period starts off with a white horse rider. He's the Antichrist. Ends with a white horse rider. He's Jesus Christ. So between the two white horses are uh, actually seven complete years, seven years. And in that period of time, there will be 21 judgments poured out on this planet, the planet that we now live on, planet Earth. 21 judgments will be poured out on this planet. As a matter of fact, it starts off, you know, sort of like, you know, uh, being severe, but then each judgment becomes more severe. So the further you get into the tribulation period, the worse things become. Now, for a lot of people that don't believe in all this, it probably have no uh, meaning to you whatsoever. But I'm telling you something. If you miss the rapture, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the total forgiveness of your sins and you're left here and you read the paper, you get on your computer the next day and you see where millions are missing, I want to tell you something. Just start reading in Revelation chapter 6. You can follow it all the way through and you'll see exactly what is going to happen because these events basically happen in chronological order. Okay, now, now what I want to do right now, you, you understand when it starts, it starts in the very beginning, uh, the tribulation period starts in the very beginning of the final week, which is a white horse rider coming, Antichrist, he'll make a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. It ends with a white horse rider who is the Lord Jesus Christ who will come back from heaven with his saints and he will take 
take, uh, he would take, uh, bring, come back to the Mount of Olives where he departed from. Okay, so now let's bag up to the middle now. Let's go to the middle. Let's see what happens in the middle of the tribulation period. And this is going to be our final lesson on the judgment of Jews. And then we'll go to the judgment of nations next. So if you look at chapter, as a matter of fact, look at chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 comes to the middle of the tribulation period. It introduces us to the middle of the tribulation period. The first three and a half years, it appears that, you know, after all these years, all these centuries, there has finally been peace, you know, brought together in the Middle East. Actually, there's been a lot of attempts to do so, but it's all failed. So it appears that the Antichrist or the false messiah is going to accomplish something that nobody else has accomplished. So it's going to appear that this man is a genius. Okay, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on, on him this morning because I want to conclude this um, today. So look at chapter 12. I want to do verse 1 and verse 2. And I'll probably drop down just a little bit. But this is coming right up to the middle of the tribulation period. Okay, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, that's Israel, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. You can find that in Genesis chapter 37 where, where Joseph had this vision. And then in verse 2 it says, And she being with child cried travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Now watch this here. Drop down to verse 5. And she brought forth a man child. Now this is not Virgin Mary bringing forth the Lord Jesus, you know, out of, out of her uh, bowels. But this is actually Israel producing the Messiah. Okay. So it says and she, that she is talking about Israel brought forth a man child. That's Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who was to rule, notice, all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now watch what happens right here. He was, Jesus was born king of the Jews. He was the Messiah, the wait, long-awaited Messiah that Israel longed for. But when he made his arrival, because they were on the iron heels of the Roman Empire, what they were looking for, they were looking for physical deliverance rather than spiritual deliverance. And so what happened, this man-child that came through the nation Israel, it was God's plan for him to rule the earth. Jesus came to set up a kingdom on this earth. That's why John the Baptist started preaching it. Jesus preached and the disciples preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, so how would we ad identify the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven would have to do with God's reign in the person of Christ upon the earth. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. The kingdom of God is God's entire rule throughout the universe. Okay, do you follow? Okay, so, so it was God's intention, even though being all-knowing, he knew exactly all the details that would happen when Christ would come into the earth realm. But that didn't change, you know, what his plan was. As a matter of fact, God knew Adam was going to sin, but that didn't stop him from, he could just say, I know he's going to sin, so I'll just, I just leave the dirt where it is. So he, he cannot help knowing every detail about everything in the, in the present and future because he's God. So, so, so God's intention was for Jesus Christ to rule the nations, but what happened was that he was crucified, and after being crucified 40 days later, he went up into heaven. So that's what verse, look at that verse, uh, latter part of verse 5. It says, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now who else got business on God's throne other than Jesus? So this is not talking about Elijah. It's not talking about, you know, uh, Enos. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Rejected, crucified, bloodshed, buried, resurrected. 40 days after his post-resurrection ministry, he went to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. So it's obvious at that point and the point that we're now living at that Christ was rejected. Now, a lot of Jews have come to Christ since then, and they realized that they made a mistake, and they crucified the Savior. 
But as a whole, the nation as a whole have not returned back unto God. One day they will. And we'll see that at the end of this lesson. It should, shouldn't be that long. Okay. So now, now look at verse 6. And what I want to do at verse 6 is just give us a time zone to show you the accuracy of the word that there is going to be exactly three and a half years left from the middle of the tribulation. Now what happens here, if I can just talk my way through it, is that Satan is going to get kicked out of the atmosphere of heaven. See, there are three heavens. Uh, Paul said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, but then about out about I cannot tell such one caught up to the third heaven. So you can't have a third without a first and a second. So, so, so Satan now is the prince of the power of the air. He, he, he has demons. He has, uh, it's, it's almost like he have a military force, demon spirits. And so in the atmosphere, that's why, you know, a lot of these satellites, you know, you know, send stuff into your home, like HBO and stuff like that. You know, we was trying to get something going on our television uh, last night. And uh, it, I, 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 I wasn't trying to go there, but it was, it was something, male something, you know, for adult only stuff kind of stuff, you know. And uh, when it came up, my wife was sitting over there, so she knew I wasn't trying to look at pornography, you know, behind her back. The stuff just came up, but we, can, we, we getting that out of there. <laughs> yeah, we getting that out of there. If I have to go back to 3, 6, and 12, that'll do me a... No, that's just like a demon. But what I'm saying is that the, the devil is controlling the spirit. He's the spirit world, in the spirit world. And so what happened, Michael and his angels... Let me just read it. Okay, look at verse 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. Now, this war in heaven is not talking about something in the past. It's talking about something that's in our future. Got it? So it says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Not the third heaven. See, most people read this, and they think this is Satan being cast out of the third heaven, you know, way back in eternity past. But this has nothing to do with, with Satan's past uh, defeat. This has everything to do with what's going to happen to him in the future. See, right now, he is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now working in the children of disobedience. So they're demon spirits. And they're actually spirits that can actually, in Ephesians chapter 6, the word say, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you know, put on the whole arm of God. Because he say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. So, so, so you got four different categories just right there. See, when the words say we wrestle not against flesh, but against principal principalities or demon spirits that actually are territorial. Their purpose is to take, take over territory. In other words, keep the gospel out of certain areas. And where the gospel is, try to get it out. As a matter of fact, some of the places where the gospel, uh, you know, is not welcome now were places that were hot spots for the gospel in the days of the apostles. So you got principalities, and then you have powers. Those powers are actually demon spirits that can get into people. And I've shared, and the reason why I shared it so, because I know what I experienced wasn't, I was not, you know, uh, hallucinating. And so, so I have had the experience on more than one occasion of casting demon spirits out of people. I'm talking about a, 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 a demon inside of a person using somebody else's voice. You understand that? Those are powers. You remember the demons that was in the man, and, and Jesus cast them out, and they went into the, the pigs? And they, about 2,000 of them got drowned. So you can still eat pork chop because all those pigs that got drowned. Ain't no, ain't no demons in those pigs. Okay, so those are powers. Principalities, powers. And then you talk about the rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of the darkness of this world are demon spirits that, that assignment is to actually um, keep the drug traffic going. Keep uh, human, you know, you know, all this, all this crime you know, with humanity going, that, that, that's what their role is. These are, are rulers of the darkness of this world. Keep the liquor stores open. Keep, you know, legalized drugs and all this other kind of stuff. You know, you know, you know everybody now got go coma so they can get some free weed or prescription for weed. So, so I'm just telling you, look, look, look at what, what's happening, how gambling now is becoming almost like it's, it's legal now. So these are, there is a demonic force that's behind all the activity that's going on in this world. And so we just think it's, it's 
politicians, people. So you got principalities, you understand who they are. You got powers, you understand who they are. And you got the rulers of the darkness of this world, right? And then you have spiritual wickedness in high places. These are not people that's in high position that's real spiritual. Spiritual wickedness is, are those places or those demons that start false religions. Those are the ones that corrupt the truth and, and make people think that, you know, you know, that you don't have to accept Jesus. You know, you can just, you know, everybody is God's child. You understand that? They, you got all kind of religions, but it's only one Savior and only one plan of salvation. That's Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so now I said all that so you understand that what I'm getting ready to show us is that in the future, Satan will be denied access in the heavenlies. Right now, remember in the days of Job, right? When the sons of God appeared before God, and that was for accountability. Okay, the word says Satan also showed up. Why? Because you cannot put anything on God's people without God's permission. So why should you fear the devil? The only, the only way that, that the devil can do anything to you is that you allow him to. That's why the word says give no place to the devil. If you don't give him no place, he won't have no place. But see, when you have unforgiveness in your heart, if the husband and wife, you had a fight last night and you can't talk, you know, just... You're just sending signals, you know, then you're giving place. See, he may start in the kitchen, and then he'll end up, it ain't no fire nowhere around there. Ain't no fire in the kitchen. Ain't no fire in the bedroom either. So, I, so I'm, you understand what I'm saying. Shut up, boy, I'll tell you. Okay. Now, now watch this. Look at verse 7 now. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. And prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. Now you understand what, what heaven we're talking about. Okay? It's the first and the second heaven. So watch what happens. It says in verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Well, see, this couldn't talk, be talking about the original expulsion of Satan from heaven because at that time he was Lucifer. His name was Lucifer. So this is true, and that's the reason why a lot of people say that, you know, when Satan left, left heaven, I don't want to mess up your theology, but I want to provoke you to thinking, that when he left heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. Well, there's a third mentioned right here, but you have to understand that there are other angels that's incarcerated right now in a place called Tartarus in the underworld. So, so when did they get kicked out? You understand that? So, so yes, there's a third mentioned right here, but it's not... To say that that was the exact number that left heaven when Satan, there are other angels that evidently, and Peter talks about it. And I, I wish you were a little bit more uh, up on your scripture so I wouldn't have to, I feel like I have to prove everything. And that's why I turn to so many scriptures. Really, really, you all the reason why it takes me so long to finish a, a lot of books because, because I want to make sure you understand. I don't care about no response. I want to make sure you understand. I'm not up here trying to promote myself. I just want you to understand the word. If you can get, in all you're getting, if you get some understanding, you got something. See, a lot of people reading the Bible and don't understand nothing that they say. Okay, so, so watch this now. In verse 9 it says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called, notice, the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, notice, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In other words, he, you know, when, when I grew up, on the farm on Stinson Road, we didn't we bought we didn't we we just bought meal and sugar and stuff like that. Everything else we ate it off the yard. So we had chickens, and so we ate chickens off the yard. We got eggs from the chickens. We I mean we really knew how to survive without you know a lot of this stuff that we have now. A lot of kids now they couldn't survive if they shut the restaurant down there starved. You know that, that's just the truth. And so but we would have chickens, and sometimes they would get to the place where they were. They would fly over the, out of the chicken yard. So what happens is that we would clip the wings. You, you, you youngsters probably don't know nothing about that. Sure, you youngsters probably don't even know what a telephone book is. I, well, I understand all that. That's what we did. But we would clip the wings so they couldn't fly high. You, you follow? You clip them enough so it don't wound them, but at the same time they can't fly. 
So in the middle, of, I'm heading somewhere. So in the middle of the tribulation period, what happens is that the devil and his demons get their wings clipped. So they no longer have access into the second, the first and the second heaven. So right now they are limited to their movement here on the earth. That shows who's in control. God is in control. Now watch this. So in verse number 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Listen to this. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down who accused them before God day and night. Now the accuser of the brethren ain't nobody but the devil. He's cast down. But the brethren is not talking about you and I. The brethren is talking about the Jewish people. It's talking about the nation Israel. Those are the brethren. Are you following me? Okay, now watch. It says in verse 11, it says, and they overcame him. Watch this. Boy, this is, this is a powerful one right here. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Wait, wait, wait just a minute. If they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, this has to be after Calvary. Because it was on the cross that Jesus Christ shed his blood for the payment of our sins. The price of redemption. So what we're talking about is future. And see, a lot of people, you say you're not concerned about your future, but you're still making investments. You've got to be concerned about your future. But your future is, shouldn't be limited to what's down here because what's down here pretty soon, it's going to leave you or you're going to leave it. See, see, lifespan in the earth realm is limited for humans. And so at some point in time, if the Lord Jesus Christ tarry, you're going to make an exit out of this earth realm. I mean, that's just where it is. You can say, I'm going to stay here. I ain't going nowhere all you want to. At some point in time, you make an exit. That's why you don't find anybody on the earth right now that's 900 years old. You don't find anybody that's 300. If they say the 200, they just lying. They got the mess, birth tick messed up or something. Ain't nobody living that long today. So our future is important. Yes, we want to make sure that we have enough money laid aside for retirement so we can buy a Corvette and so we can, you know, let our hair, well, don't worry about your hair. Just, just let the roof down, you know, convertible. Just let the roof down. You want to be able to do that. You, you want to be able to just retire and not struggle with debt. But you know what happens? The closer you get to retirement, and when you get into retirement, I don't want to depress you. But it's countdown to your departure. That's why they, they wait until you get 66 to receive your full benefits on retirement. Because they figured another four or five years, you're going to be gone anyway. That's why you need to be trying to enjoy some of your stuff now. You know, I, I plan on, you know, if, I, if we, you know, leave a little something for somebody. You know what I'm saying? But, but it, the, the Bible, te my, my Bible tells me that God give me richly all things to enjoy. So if I have money, I ain't going to just be looking at it talking about I got it. Yeah, but, what you, yeah, but your, shoe, I, your shoes tore up. You need to buy some shoes. I've been delivered too because I, I, I got a little money laid to the side. Ain't a whole bunch. Don't try to rob me because I don't play that junk right there. Now, don't try that. I'm going to tell you right now, don't come trying to come through no wonder now. I got a bulldog that barked right here, and he bite way over there. So don't, don't do that. But... Uh, but I'm just saying that I had to come to a point in my life to realize, you know, ain't no need of me walking around in these cheap shoes and my feet hurting. I told the church Wednesday night, if, you, if, your, foot's, if your foot's hurting, that's Ebonics all the way right there. If your foot's hurting, buy you some better shoes. My wife bought me some better shoes, man. I tell you what, man, I treat them shoes like they, like they are Mercedes, boy. I tell you, I ain't never felt so good walking. I'm telling you, it's, it's a real good feeling. So enjoy your wealth. But that, that, that tells us that time here on this earth is limited. It's limited. I'm not trying to scare. And, and matter of fact, if you're born again, you shouldn't be afraid of death anyway. Because when a Christian departs, it's, it's almost like sleep. 
So you don't be afraid to go to sleep at night. You say, I ain't, shoot, I, ain't, I don't want to go to sleep. I might not wake up in the morning. But death is like sleep. Resurrection uh, for the child of God is the Greek word anastasis. It means that that which was laid down was raised up because it went to sleep. Okay? Your soul and spirit don't sleep, but your body does. And so as a believer, if you transition as a believer, you just simply close your eyes here and open up in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm saying that so you don't be afraid of death. Amen. Now, the butcher knife, I can understand you being afraid of how. You understand that? You know, I, I don't like taking shots, but I will do the results. You know, I, I look for the results. So, so, so death is not something that the child of God needs to fear. It ain't something you need to, you know, volunteer for either. Amen. You don't need to go to heaven early by committing suicide. Amen. You know, there's a place already reserved in heaven for you. You don't, you don't commit suicide, and uh, your problem is, is something that can be fixed. Amen. You know, somebody leave you, you can, somebody, you, it's somebody else. Don't, don't jump off the bridge over one person. You, you follow me? Yeah, I mean, you get fired off a job and you're making good money. Hey, don't, don't, don't kill yourself because they fired you. Get another job or start your own business. Yeah, do that. Do that. I guarantee you, most people that commit suicide, you know, and that's why you Christians need to quit isolating yourself. Talk to somebody. Tell somebody that you're hurting and you trying to be macho, talking about ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I was so hungry one time that the lady at one of the people how I know I'm, I, I'm all over the place. I, I, ain't, I ain't lying. When I get hungry, I get, I get crazy hungry. My wife will tell you, I be crazy hungry. I, I get too hungry, I don't want to talk. Mm -mm. I put a frown on my face. That's just, that's just the way my stuff works. But when I eat, Things happen. <laughs> I feel better. I start talking to my wife, and she wonder why I'm just now starting to say something. I was hungry. Yeah, feed a man. I tell you what. You, okay, now watch this here. Let's let's get back into the Bible, man. I'm getting off track. Okay, watch this here. In verse 11, chapter 12, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Watch this here. And they love not their lives unto the death. That's strong conviction. Now watch verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, those the angels that remain. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that his time is short. Now, I wanted to do this so I can ease us up to the middle of the tribulation period. I'm not going to give you all the details about what happened in the tribulation period, but I want to just let, let you see the accuracy of God's word so, so therefore we will believe and know the word of God is true. What he says is going to happen, it's going to happen. Now, watch this. He knows his time is short. Now, right now, a lot of people, I've heard people say when I was a kid coming up, the devil is busy because he knows his time is short. The devil don't know how much time he got right now. He's the devil. He knows his time is short when he no longer have access into the first and second heaven. That's when he knows his time is short. Right now, he don't know how much time he has. He's the devil. He's not God. He cannot interpret scripture. Now watch this. Verse 13 says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child. Watch this here now. Couldn't get to the, the man child itself, but he said, I'll get the woman that brought the man child forth. The woman is Israel. That's why we entitled this starting off the judgment of the Jews, because the tribulation period deals with Israel basically, but it affects everybody that's on the planet. So the devil is cast out. Now watch this here. He's cast out. He's limited to his movement now. So being a devil, what do you think he's going to do? Watch this here. Watch this here. In verse 14. And to the woman was given, wait a minute, look at 13. And when the dragon was uh, saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman 
That's Israel. See, it's coming to the middle of the tribulation now. Who, who persecuted? You know, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child. Verse 14 says, and the woman was given two wings of an eagle that she might fly into the wilderness in her place where she is nourished, watch this here, for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. See, God, there's a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of remnant. The doctrine of remnant teaches that God always has something left. It, it may come down to one seed, but it's always going to be a remnant left. Look, look at Job and his dilemma. It always was somebody left that said, Job, this happened. Job, that, it always is a remnant. So during the tribulation period, listen to me now, and I know a lot of this may sound Greekish to you, but I'm not going to lie to you here on the parking lot. So what happened in the tribulation period, in the middle, we're coming to the middle, and you're going to see all this here. When you get to the middle of the tribulation period, what happens is that Satan now, he's cast out, so he's mad with that woman that brought forth that man child. So now he seeks to wipe out genocide Israel. But what God does, he gives Israel almost like the wings of an eagle and places them in a place. Some people think that it's a place called Petra, where they will be hidden and no technology will be able to find them. You remember Elijah when Elijah said that, you know, I'm the only one left? God said, I got 7,000 that hadn't bowed their knees to Baal. So God hides them. As a matter of fact, where you think you are? We're hidden in Christ right now. He's hiding us. If the devil could have killed you last night, you think you'd be here today? You're protected by the almighty God. And what really give him, give him access to your life, now he cannot possess you. No Christian can be demon possessed. But, but, but we, we can be influenced. And what give him access is when you start saying the wrong thing out of your mouth. You, you're talking about the devil made me do it. Well, he said, you, they, they lying on me, so I might as well just go on and do it anyway. <laughs> so you have to watch what you say. Say, man, these shoes are killing me. I mean, you have to watch what you say. I mean, some things we say out of humor, and I, and I understand that God knows that too. But you have to understand that the enemy will take your words and use them against you. Okay, watch it. Not so much for that. That's something, something. Okay, so, so get the picture now. The devil... Wings been clipped. He's mad with the woman, but God hides that woman somewhere that cannot be found. God good at hiding. He hid Moses. Nobody's ever found out where Moses' body was with all the technology. Nobody found it. When God hides you, you're hidden. So we're hidden in Jesus. That's the reason why we're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. If the thief could steal you, he would have stole you a long time ago. Okay, now watch this. Chapter 13, we finally get to the point. So he says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horn, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name Blasphemy. Now, if I can, I want to try to make a long story short right here because if I try to get too detailed, I'm going to be... I'm going to be left behind, and it ain't even the rapture. So, so here's what happens. The devil is kicked out of the first and second heaven, right? So now who is the most influential person on the planet? The Antichrist. Because he just made a peace treaty with Israel three and a half years earlier to, to guarantee peace between the Jews and the Arab nations. So guess what he does? Since he can't fly now, he goes to the most influential person on the planet who at that time would be the Antichrist. Watch what happens. It says in the verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as though it was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world, world wandered after the beast. 
Now, this is amazing because he started off as a white horse rider. But he ends up being the beast that comes out of the sea of humanity. His real nature is being seen. You met people, when you, when you first met them, you thought they were just a joy of your life. But when you got to know them, hmm, all you did was just start praying before them probably. You know, just pray for them. The devil never come to you and say, I'm the devil. He always come as a, 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 a lamb in a, a wolf in sheep clothing. So now his real nature comes out. Watch this here now. In verse number four. No, this is what I want to do. Tribulation, middle of the tribulation. I want to show you what happens here. I want you to back over to chapter number 11. Chapter number 11. I want you to look at verse two. Because that's going to be a rebuilt temple. That's going to be a third temple that's going to be built in in Israel, Jerusalem. Watch this. And so the Gentile, he, he's given the dimensions on how to do this. Now watch this. It says, but the court which is outside or without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the heathens of the nations of the Gentiles. And the holy city shall be tread, shall they tread underfoot, notice, 42 months. You know how long 42 months is? It's three and a half years. Now watch this here. Look at chapter 12, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had, had a place prepared by God that they should feed her there. Notice, a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's 1,260 days. You know how long that is? Three and a half years. Okay, watch this here. Look at 14, 12, verse 14. Just want to make a point right here. It says, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, just read it, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. What place? God, place God had already prepared for her where she is nourished for a time, that's one year, and times, that's two years, and half a time, that's six months, from the face of the serpent. Now watch this, look at verse 5 in chapter 13. And we're almost done. You know, this is, this is, this is just going to be the way, in just a little bit, and how we close this out in the watch. In verse 5, Revelation 13, and there was given unto him a mouth. Talking about the Antichrist. Seemed like he was raised from the dead. Now, you know, they're making a God out of him. So it says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue. Watch this. Forty and two months. So how long is the forty and two months? Three and a half years. So you see. And I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to, to come to a close in this series, and I hope it's really enlightened you and, and help you to understand something about our future. You know, thank God for, for you know, planning for this life and, and you know, having a, a great life and, and um, you know, material possessions, relationships, but all that, all that's going to end at some point. Okay? So now, so we, we share with you that the tribulation period starts at the signing of the Antichrist by, with that peace treaty, Revelation chapter number 6. Tribulation period ends with a white horse rider, Revelation chapter 19, where Christ actually comes back to the earth. Now between the two white horse riders is a period of time on this earth that the world has never seen before. And it's seven years. To be accurate, it's seven years. First three and a half years, it seemed like everything is going the way planned it, planned. But the last three and a half years, that's why we went to chapter 12. See, the devil is mad now because he get kicked out. So what he does is that he set up the assassination for the Antichrist. And what happens? He gets into the body of the Antichrist, and now what you have, you have Satan in human flesh. Okay, what, what is the mystery of godliness? Watch this here. The words say... Great is the mystery of godliness. 
God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. So the, the so the, 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 the godliness, the mystery of godliness is Jesus Christ being God in flesh. Well, if he anti Christ, then, then he won't flesh too, right? So the mystery of iniquity will be actually antichrist being possessed by the devil himself in his body. And so now he can express because he has the platform. He can express, express his hatred for the Jews. That's the reason why now he says that, that uh, watch this, I want you to turn to 2 Thessalonians. If this message was rated this morning, this probably be one of the worst messages you probably ever heard if, if you really struggle with, with eschatology. But if you don't struggle with it, 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 it actually bless you. Watch this here. 2 Thessalonians. Oh, man. Wait, come on. Come over here. Okay, watch this here. In, in chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians. Watch this here. The, the word says in verse 3. Let me start at verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come the falling away first. A falling away is what it says, but actually the falling away. Let me, let me make the difference right, right here. There's a falling away f that's taking place right now with the body of Christ. Yeah. But this is talking about a particular falling away. G guess what that's referring to? When the rapture happens, guess what happens? All the Christians are gone. So that's the falling away. That is talking in the original Greek right there, that, that, that A actually should be the. It's a definite article that whenever the church of God leaves out of here, it's just like trying to eat meat with no season. The salt of the earth leaves. Amen. There's nothing to preserve the place. The, are you following? Okay. So, so watch this now. So he says now, you know, that falling away should not come, uh, come you know, except the well, well, watch it, there shall come the falling away first. When, then watch this and say then that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition see Jesus was son of God the devil will be I mean the, the antichrist going to be son of the devil he's going to be God was in Christ right Amen. reconciling the world unto himself right Amen. the antichrist is going to have the devil in him wrecking the world now watch verse 4. Verse 4 says, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sit in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now when does this happen? This happens in the middle of the tribulation period when he's no longer given access into the heavenlies. He goes, you say, you say well man, we, we got a problem with our marriage. We, we need to hear something about uh, intimacy and something like that as well. But we'll come to the office, we'll talk to you later about that. But right now, check in on this. This is real important. So it's in the middle of the tribulation period that he goes into the rebuilt temple. And do you know Israel right now, I wish I could have brought those articles out here that last week. Israel right now have plans on rebuilding their temple. It was just said in the month of April, they have plans to rebuild their temple. They want to start building the temple right now. Okay. And then we talk about, you see what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine, right? Russia right now is saying that there's a church in Israel, or Jerusalem it is, that was actually promised to them by the last administration. So they want it. You think, you think uh, Vladimir Putin and, you know, the Russian people, I, I think you got some Christians in Russia, but you think that they want the church for worship? No, it's to get a foot in. And do you know, in Revelation chapter 38, the word is already clear on the fact that Russia is going to go into Israel with the aid of uh, uh, Germany, uh, Ethiopia, Persia, Iran, going to go into Israel and invade Israel. What, what, what make them have, have, have this problem? What, why would they do that? Because ev evidently something is going to happen to the economy. So if, 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 you, if you wreck your economy and people can't hardly survive because of the inflation in the economy, then then what do you do? I mean, people that want stuff, what, they, they don't have what they do. They try to take your stuff. So what, what, so what eventually will happen is that Russia will go in to invade Israel because what Arab nation is going to help Israel? 
NATO not going to respond. The United States is not going to respond. So what I'm telling you that all this stuff is really in our face. But what happened is that we've been distracted by other stuff and don't realize the times that we're now living in. Fin is closed. I, just like I heard a, a preacher say many years ago, I'm not even looking for a sign. I'm listening for a shout. I'm listening for the Lord to shout and get us out of here. But that's just how close it is. Okay, now, watch it. Let me see if I can bring this to a close. I really do. I'm, I want to do this in the next few minutes. Um, how do I want to do I want you to go to uh, the tribulation period. There's going to be a lot of things, and I, I have quite a bit of time left, but I'm, I'm not going to even use all of it. Uh, date being Mother's Day, I want to give you a Mother's Day treat. And my treat is going to be to get through a few minutes earlier. That's my treat. And so... Um, I would have canceled service this evening, but we got baptism. And so, you know, so some of you ain't coming back anyway, so it's already canceled for you. So, so, so I understand my heart here. Okay. I know this is a little different. This don't sound like a Sunday morning message, but, but I'm telling you where, where we are. Um, there are a lot of people going to wake up shocked one day when they realize that, man, them people talking about that Bible and that rapture, they were telling the truth. I'm telling you. It's going to happen. All the prophecies relative to Christ's first coming, they happen. This one will too. So I'm just trying to give us heads up. You know, I think that I'd be a, a false or idle shepherd to see the enemy coming and not warn you. So, so I'm just telling you that, hey, it's close. I'm not a date setter because I told you date setters are upsetters, so I ain't trying to upset nobody. Uh, you live every day like it's your last day. Enjoy your life. Enjoy people. Keep your heart right before God. You know, if you're saved, you're going to heaven when, it, when the rapture happens. So you, that's no issue. Okay. Now watch it. Let, let me see if I can, I can close this out like that. I want you to go to, go to Michael chapter 5, the book of Michael. Michael chapter 5. We want, want to show you. We're going to show you how this thing is going to end up. It's going to end up in a good way. It's going to end up in a good way. May 14, 1948, Israel was given an opportunity to go back to the land. You, you remember those dates, May 14, 1948. President Harry Truman was the one that, that made the deciding vote that would cause the United Nations to recognize Israel as their, as their own country, state, okay? And then uh, Six-Day War in 1967, they regained control of Jerusalem. Initially, when, when they went back to the, the land, about 650,000 Jews went back in 1948. It's recorded that 600. 50,000 went back. The reason for that is because God said in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 28, that he was going to bring them out of all the nations and they were going to get back into their own, own homeland. Amen. And the reason why they need to be in the land because they need to be there to receive Messiah Jesus when he returns. So all the feasts will be fulfilled. The trumpets, which is, will be in fulfillment, when the rapture takes place, they'd be going back, and then, then you have the Feast of, of the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement, so they can be there for the Feast of Tabernacles. I know that sounds real freakish to you, but, but I mean the truth is the truth. And so, so the way this thing ends is that when, I'm going to get ahead of the curve, so the way it ends is that when Christ returns, finally, Israel as a nation Says, wow, we've been looking for you a long time. You're finally here. But it was their fault to reject Christ, to crucify him. But God's love raised them from the dead and seated them in heaven so they could still have a future plan. Now watch this. I want you to look at this. In, in Michael chapter number, tell you, but look at chapter 4, Michael chapter 4. It says, and many nations shall come and say, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. 
Notice. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jerusalem has never been in this position. And watch this here in verse number three. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall bear their swords, or they shall beat their swords in the plowshares, and their spears in the pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn, learn war anymore. In other words, this is describing the after effects of Christ coming, coming back and receiving Israel, or Israel receiving him as Messiah. These are the results. War is over, but it's going to be a great war when he comes. Now watch over in chapter 5, verse number 3. And I'll show you what's been going on all this time. And then I'm going to go to one final scripture. And I promise you, the turkey won't get cold. Okay, watch verse 3. Verse 3 says, therefore, I mean, Micah 5, verse 3. It says, therefore, will he give them up until the time. Now, watch this. Now, give who up? He's talking about Israel, right? He didn't say give up on them, but to give them up. Now, watch. Therefore, will he give them up until the time that she who travailed has brought forth. That's tribulation. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. That's what's going to be in the future of Israel. Now watch this in Isaiah chapter number. I, I shared it last time. I'm closing out with this last scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 66. Some of these things that's been said this morning may be a little difficult for you, especially if you hadn't, you know, really been into Bible prophecy, it may be a little difficult for you. But watch and see how all this ends up. Verse number 7, Isaiah 66. It says, before she travailed, that travail right there is talking about the tribulation period. She brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. In other words, Israel gave birth to the baby, the man child Jesus, before the pain. So if I could put it in simple terms, a layman's terms, it's like, it's like a woman having a baby, and then a few years or weeks later, she had a pain. In other words, she had the baby, but the pain came later. So Israel gave birth to the Messiah, Jesus. But the pain didn't come and will not come until the tribulation period. The tribulation period will be the pain from the birth of Jesus Christ to Israel. It sounds like a paradox. It just sounds, well, let's see what the words say. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, who has heard, heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Watch this. For as soon as Zion travailed, that's Israel, she brought forth her children. Notice, not the child this time. Her children. See, the child came to bring forth the children. See, see you, you, I, I say it like this a lot of times. See, Jesus Christ was son of God who became son of man so sons of men could become sons of God. So he became one of us so we could become one of his. So the man child Jesus actually came before the pain. The pain is a, is, is a warning to say the child is coming. But he was rejected the first time. So, so, and see, I believe this is it. Mary, Mary gave birth to Jesus without a doctor because she was having a doctor. I believe that Mary gave birth to Jesus without pain because she was having a pain killer. So the tribulation period is the pain that is responding to the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. 
So seven years of hell on earth is coming. The good news for those that are saved is that you're saved, you'll be out before you get here. The bad news for those that are not saved is that you might be reading the articles in your paper on your iPad or whatever the day after. Phil, let me tell you something. God's not playing with his word and with our future. It's big. Now watch this. And I, I'm, I'm closing right here. Trying my best. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, shall, watch it, shall I bring to the birth, wait a minute, wait a minute, I ain't reading this right. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Watch verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, said the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, said the Lord. God's going to do just what he said. Okay. I, I got five minutes left. Let me just put all, all this together. In Leviticus chapter 23, there, there are seven feasts in Leviticus chapter 23. I said enough, y'all are committed to memory. The first feast is called the Passover feast. It was fulfilled in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second feast in Leviticus chapter 23 is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It speaks about the impeccability of Christ. He had no sin, he knew no sin, he did no sin, he was without sin. The next feast was called the Feast of First Fruits. It was fulfilled in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's the first one to ever be raised from the dead. Everybody else was just restored back to life and had to die all over again. Okay? And then the fourth feast was the Feast of Pentecost that was fulfilled in Acts, as you read Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind filled the place where they were sitting there, sit upon them cloven tongues as a fire, and, still, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave, gave them utterance. So you have four feasts already fulfilled. Four feasts. But you have three unfulfilled. That's trumpets. What is trumpets? Trumpets blown once a month, the beginning of the month, for convocation. The Feast of Trumpets was blown longer and louder. Feast of Trumpets is not fulfilled yet. You can see it in motion because there are Jews from all over the world going back to their homeland Israel. That's the Feast of Trumpets. Don't tell me if God can't put it in the birds by instinct to go north and south based on the change of the weather, he can put it in all the Jews to go back to their land. So that's the Feast of Trumpets being fulfilled. Right now, uh, as of a few weeks ago when I researched, uh, Israel right now has the largest Jewish population in the world with at least 9 million Jews that have returned back. What are they returning back for? They're returning back because after the Feast of Trumpets come what is called the Day of Atonement. What is the Day of Atonement? The Day of Atonement was a day of national repentance. The Day of Atonement has to do with Israel receiving Messiah Jesus. So they go back to the land so that when he returns back from heaven, they would say, blessed is he who coming. I mean, they're going to be happy to see that after all these years, the, the, the deceiver, the, the, the Antichrist deceived us. So they still have scripture. They'll be able to tell that, that Jesus Christ, and when they see him this time, they, they'll know him. So the whole nation will receive him. That will fulfill what is called the Day of Atonement. And then you say, well, there's one other feast. What is the other feast? The other feast is called Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles will be fulfilled after he ends the war of Armageddon, after they clean up all the mess that's on this, pla on this planet, it will take 30 days, and we're going to talk about nations next week. It'll be, it's going to take some time to judge the nations and then set up his kingdom on this earth. And friend, that would be, I mean, this is God's plan. I tell you what, if I was you, I'd go back, you ought to go behind everything I said and test it and see if I'm telling you the truth or not. Because I could not be telling you the truth. I mean, I, I, I know I am, but you ought to go back and check and see. So Israel will be in the land receive Messiah but look at all the trouble they had to go through to get there. 21 judgment. Judgment of the Jews.
conclude it with that thought, but it don't end right here because God has another plan. He has things further on in the future. So, so we're going we're gonna to cut off right there. And uh, like I say, this may have been a little, little, little deep, uh, this section. But, you know, at some point we got to teach the word. You know, if you've never been taught it, then you, you know, you won't ever understand it. And so I know this is not something that everybody won't hear on Mother's Day. Everybody won't hear how good you're cooking and how good you're looking and, and everything else. And I think you're looking good. And I think you, 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 you're cooking all. If, you, if your family can eat it, you're fine. And so uh, I'm okay with, with that. But um, for every, every holiday, my custom is that I don't revert to whatever the occasion is. Uh, it's always Jesus. It's always Jesus Christ and the resurrection. I never try to share anything with you and leave out Jesus Christ. If it's righteousness, I can't end without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's our blessed hope. Okay? So, so stay on your feet. I trust that you uh, learned some things out of this uh, particular series. Next time we'll talk about the judgment of nations. It's real interesting. And so, so they, there you have it. Uh, I didn't think that it was going to be that long, you know, dealing with it. But, but however long it took, then um, that's, that's, what it, that's what we did. Okay. So, Father, we thank you for the word that's been shared today. Thank you for every person that's here. Thank you for uh, every mother that's already been acknowledged, so, but we do thank you. And I pray, Father, that as we have taught on this section of the word, that every person is able to understand and put the puzzle together and see uh, your plan for the ages. And we give you the praise right now. And I pray if there's anyone on the sound of my voice that have not made a personal decision to accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and